Hey, Eric, did you say something? Yeah, you're not coming out clearly, Eric. Maybe you're very far from the microphone. Um, it shows me audio feedback in the little uh, UI, but um, no, I was just saying hello. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah, no, no, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, we can get started, I believe. Yeah. All right, uh, folks, welcome. This is the ITF uh, DMM Working Group. I'm Shri Gandavelli, and with me is Satori Khan. <coughs> Eric, uh, Eric, Eric is also there. Okay, so the agenda for today here, I think before that, I think uh, some uh, uh, the few things we need to take care of. One is uh, the, the IPR rights. I hope we, we are able to see the see the slides on the ITF's position on the IPR declarations and the general rules. And this is the note well statement. We are running the uh, ITF meetings are held in certain rules and regulations. These are documented in these uh, specific documents. And a uh, few other things. Uh, you don't need to take care of blue sheets anymore. There's a virtual meeting. So that's of note takers. Any note takers? Any, any, anybody willing to take uh, notes, please post. A uh, note, uh, please write something. Folks, any note takers? How do they respond? They'll write somewhere in the chat window, I guess, right? Carlos, Alex, anybody? I just want to make sure they don't know how to respond, or is it nobody's interested? Hmm. Okay, Pablo, thank you. Okay, Pablo, is there not any other one more one more person, please? Oh, thanks, Pablo. Thank you. Yeah. We need one more note taker, please. All right, <laughs> we can get started. Okay. Well, thanks, Pablo, for that. And now, a few things. I think uh, our last ITF meeting was ITF uh, 106. 107 was cancelled, 108 we did not schedule it. So between uh, 106 and now, I think uh, a few updates. The key things is we, uh, I think uh, the distributed mobility anchoring draft is published as RFC 8818. Congrats to the authors. I think it was in the queue for a long time, but uh, it had to go through several revisions and even uh, rewrite. So, but uh, 
thanks for all the efforts, uh, all the authors. And also, you know, PMMB6 extensions for DMM is also published as an RFC, RFC 8885. Thanks again uh, to the authors. I think uh, so that's that's the key update. And now on the working group documents, I think uh, we have the user plane protocol uh, and architecture analysis document that's uh, it's coming out you know pretty good. Uh, that's in a great shape in general. I think uh, last time I believe the authors were not ready for the last call or at least you know I thought but now we should uh, probably in the next you know now it should be able to move forward. The other document is segment routing uh, SRV6, the mobile user plane. This one, there was a dependency on the spring document. I think now those dependencies are clear, getting cleared. And I think now we should be able to take this forward. I think uh, there are two other documents related to FPC. I think uh, uh, this one, there hasn't been much progress. Uh, Charlie uh, and Lyle, two of the key authors are uh, not active and Charlie retired. So we are having a few issues on this one. We did talk to our area director, Eric, on this, right? We promised to see, show some activity on this, but uh, that did not happen. So for now, you know, we have not made any decision on this yet, but uh, we want some more time to reach out to Charlie and Lyle and uh, finally make a decision. But, but it's so sad, the document is almost done. It's just that that one last push, I think uh, that's uh, one. In fact, all we need is just a, you know, publishing the document, a new revision, and uh, somebody willing to, you know, address any comments IESC, you know, through the IESC process. Uh, but uh, I think uh, a tremendous amount of efforts went into this, uh, this document. I think that's, uh, it will be unfortunate if we leave it out here, but, uh, but let's see what comes up. Now, uh, this is where we are with respect to the working group documents, right? I think um, now today's topics, I think, you know, there are, you know, updates on the, the two working group documents and uh, two other new topics. And um, also there is a rechartering discussion we'd like to, you know, uh, discuss that at the end of the presentations, like to see, like, you know, I think uh, overall this working group is charted to do two things, right? And uh, overall, what are the topics that we initially thought we do for the distributed mobility management that we are somewhat, you know, getting closer to completion, right? The SRV6 work is a major thing that's left out, but at least the other documents were done. And we also are charted to support any mobile IPv6, PMV6, V6 extensions as an ongoing process. That was the agreement when we formed the working group. So, so that is there. But uh, overall, for the near topics, we'd like to have you know see some interest. I think you know more. Uh, last I think a uh, few months we have been you know the terribly really bad actually with respect to working group activity. I think it's more than the. The participants, even the chairs, we were not active. I think uh, it's exactly a perfect example as how not to run an IT or working group. But I think uh, hopefully, you know, I think uh, if you bring some focus back, and like with some new topics and if there's proper interest, we want to take it forward. At least that's the, that's the goal. And uh, with that, I think um, today's topics, first topics is, is uh, the transport network available mobility for 5G. Uh, Uma, is going to present this. Uma, are you there? Sure, I'm here. Uh, so, okay, okay let, 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 let me, you know, share, I think one second. I'm trying to see what's the best way to show you, I guess. Uh, let me go to the folder. Meeting with me. Uh, You can see this, or probably you're still seeing the. Uh, I think the uh, 5G use plan analysis forms have uh, some slide. Okay, you're able to see the slide? That's what you see? Um, I, I can see it today's presentation, but uh, I, I don't see, see the slides. Uh, okay, well, one second, just let me make sure. Okay. Uh, 
just Okay, yeah, let me stop this. Okay, stop screening. Let me let me go. Hold on. Let me open the local copy and then share once again. Uma, you can uh, see it no? Hello? Uh, hi, hi, Shri. I couldn't see your slides. Uh, you want me to present myself? Yeah, go ahead, actually. That, that, that works. Uh, Sri, I am not sure how to. You have to give control to me, or okay. how is it? Uh, the, yeah, let's one second. Just okay. Cool. Now I can see it. Your screen. Okay. Okay. Cool. Did ah. you see something? I couldn't hear. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's. Uh, so, uh, all right. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, again, it's a blank screen. It's a black screen now. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good. First slide, yeah. Okay. Maybe I can go uh, to slide. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about... Hi, this is Uma. I'm going to talk about transport network aware mobility for 5G. And uh, just to give a recap, uh, so I'm going to talk mostly about the updates that have been done uh, last two months. Uh, but to give a recap for the people uh, who were not there earlier, so uh, release 15, 23501, 50 to specify 5G architecture and various uh, mobility procedures uh, for UE, uh, which covers uh, 4G, 4G case SSC mode 1 and mode 2, mode 3, which are specific to 5G, right? So uh, make before break in SSC 3. Uh, but the problems are, so these, uh, 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 there's no transport network awareness in these scenarios, right? So uh, if they care about RAN, uh, their, uh, their uh, radio access network and the core network, uh, but the transport network is uh, not factored. Uh, so why this has to be factored? Because some of the use cases where AR, VR, or 5G vehicular uh, network cases, uh, the transport network and uh, uh, SLA guarantees transport network need to be factored uh, both on, on U and N3 and N interfaces. Uh, so it is difficult to, with the current approach, it's difficult to provide SLA guarantees end to end. Um, you know, so this is uh, this is this framework addresses that aspect, and the second thing is there's an underspecified mapping function from 3GP PDU sessions uh, to the uh, network underlay paths. Uh, it could be any underlay; it's not specific to uh, particular underlay like RSVPT, SR, or any versions of SR. Uh, but there is no uh, underlying mapping function. Uh, so this has to be defined because uh, when the mobility happens from UV, uh, it has to be uniformly configured across the network. So this aspect also has been addressed in this draft. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, so, so this draft was first presented in July 2018, IETF 102 in Montreal. Uh, this mobility function aware underlay transport has been defined here and uh, mapping to various underlying transport technologies. Uh, initially, like, you know, we, uh, we laid out a lot of stuff. Also, we talked about LISP and other uh, uh, technologies at the time, 2018, we were talking about uh, uh, ILA-based mobility and other scenarios. But we eventually, in November 2020, previously, we just focused on the specific two aspects, that is how, uh, how the framework can be defined and how the underlay transport mapping can be defined. So these two aspects we boiled on. Uh, in November 2018, uh, both in N3 and N9 interfaces, we started. N9 is the new interface in 5G. Uh, how the cost is being carried in both these interfaces has been defined. 
<coughs> missing transport network related items like slice selection and integrated approach. There are two approaches as defined in a backward compatible way in 4G deployments, which addresses the 4G deployments and eventually which can be migrated to 5G. Uh, both cases have been defined in section 2.2 and eventually section 3, some updates as per uh, uh, comments received from, uh, uh, from the list and offline. In uh, 2009, IETF 105, we further, uh, we got a lot of feedback time in uh, 105 time. So we have contributions from Altiostar, we are working on the RAN side mostly, and Nokia, uh, Future Wireless and Interdistant folks. So they have a lot of discussions, a lot of contributions. So uh, their content have been added, and as a co authors have been all set as co authors. And uh, uh, that time, uh, there were uh, we were not uh, ready with the uh, draft because uh, we couldn't uh, uh, come up with a unified approach. So there were two solutions uh, uh, set for the time uh, in uh, uh, 04 version. Next slide, please. Uh, so even, eventually, these uh, two solutions got harmonized in 05, uh, simplified solution approach, and uh, we left with the one uh, outstanding issue, how to carry the transport network context identifier in the packet. Uh, so uh, we don't want to specify anything SRV specific because uh, the network, some parts of the network cannot be, may not be used SR at all, uh, some layer two network. So we, uh, we, uh, we have a lot of ideas from the working group at that time. Uh, so finally, eventually, uh, we settled up with one option, which is neutral to um, the traffic engineering in the transport. So uh, we also added uh, uh, further refinements in 06 by John, and all the updates and the, some of the comments received in the list, uh, some of the comments received on the November 2000 Singapore uh, meeting has been uh, in the, presented in the list. Next slide, please. So uh, recent comment summary. So uh, no, sorry, unfortunately, we couldn't present last uh, uh, two sessions because there's no DMM session. And also, we are also not active uh, with various other things that were happening. Uh, so unfortunately, we couldn't uh, uh, progress further. But uh, when we asked uh, two months back, uh, uh, Chase asked to uh, discuss in the working group. And uh, we mentioned it. And a uh, couple of folks uh, responded with a couple of comments. Uh, one is from one comment is from uh, Pablo. Uh, related to simplifying section three, uh, section three and appendix, uh, which is the new mobility scenarios with the TE mechanism PPR. Uh, second comment is additional ranges. <coughs> Kaushik wants to extend this to SD WAN scenario for enterprise 5G use cases they are working on. So they wanted to um, extend this to end to end scenario where your session generation is not happening on the edge uh, rather than uh, on the cloud, right? So in this case, end to end SLS, they want SD SD WAN extensions, they want security. Um, uh, to be added to the uh, range of some of the ranges defined in the draft. Uh, finally, some a couple of comments related to inconsistent descriptions and missed items have been also asked by Kaushik, and uh, these are the in a summary of the comments. Okay, so uh, uh, what we changed in 08. So uh, the last region, uh, so the, the main section is uh, from Pablo to take care of the Pablo's comments. Uh, we, uh, uh, we just simplified uh, section three and uh, just to show the applicability of the framework to the different underlays. Uh, this is not meant to be exhaustive underlays, like you know, uh, we uh, discussed a couple of underlays, how this can be done. So this similarly, uh, any new underlay transport mechanism can be used uh, with this framework in the mobility domain. Similarly, Appendix B, which is related to SSC modes, various mobility scenarios uh, have been described. And you know that uh, that Pablo asked to remove that into a separate section because that is mostly focused on PPR, how that can be done. So it's all been moved to a different draft uh, PPR, and that is uh, appropriately referenced in uh, various parts of this draft. Uh, unfortunately, both the drafts are uploaded on the same day. I could not add the reference into this draft. Uh, so, uh, so unfortunately, I couldn't do that. So that's one thing. That's the last thing that's pending on this. Uh, yes, and other ranges as Kaushik asked, we uh, we added the text to uh, define the additional ranges for the security uh, with slicing. Uh, like you know, some slices they want security as a key parameter. So uh, this is in addition to uh, what happens uh, from the. Uh, G node B emits the packet with IPsec in cases where it cannot be done, uh, this can be done in the PE node uh, in front of it. Uh, and the comments are also addressed. Next slide. I think uh, uh, we were ready uh, from other point of view and from the comment side from 0 section, uh, 06 version itself, but uh, unfortunately we couldn't follow up as I specified earlier. So 
uh, current version is explained at us for the comments received uh, last month and uh, and uh, uh, and that been all addressed so we feel uh, from other side we wanted to ask for working group production and uh, want to continue further continue this work based on the amount of uh, uh, efforts that have been already done on this okay thanks ma so any questions comments Hi Pablo, go ahead. Yeah, Pablo, go ahead. Do you hear me? You can unmute yourself. Okay, let me unmute. Yeah, okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so um, first, uh, many thanks to Uman, the authors, uh, for all the work on this document and, and improving significantly the document since the, the last revision. Um, I do have two comments. Um, so the first comment is to be done on the scalability and section two to three. Um, and basically you say that uh, an MTNC represents a, a slice with a given QS configuration and a transport path in between two particular three uh, UPP UPFs. Um, and so basically what you say is that the, in, in section two to three, you say that the MTNC idea space is actually a scaling a square to a number of sites um, and with 65,000 identifiers, so with 16 bits is enough. Um, now, the, the question that I have for you is that if, if I do the math, if you have three traffic classes and 200 UPF, uh, for example, you have already burned all of these 16-bit uh, um, ideas. And the question that I have for you is, have you considered decoupling the slice ID from the path ID? Because to me, it seems like you could really only, I mean, one way that you could improve scalability is just by encoding the, the uh, an identifier for the slice instead of an identifier for the slice in combination with the path. Uh, Pablo, I think you are breaking up, but uh, what I'm understanding, I just want to let me repeat uh, what I'm understanding. So, so you're saying that identifier space is not enough with MTNC ID defined here with number of UPFs. That's what you're saying. So I, I'm saying that, yes, I think it is not enough. And my question is, why don't you decouple the slice from the path? ID. Oh, no, no. Okay. So path ID, you don't have to, uh, so see, you, you don't have to, it's, it's not coupled at all, right? So so what is uh, done is uh, when the packet is emitted from GNP or UPF, uh, the source ports are uh, representative of the, uh, the information, SST information. So that information, you can use it uh, in the PE to uh, configure a policy if you are using SR, uh, SR V6 or SR MPLS, whatever the technology you use underlying, use a configuration policy in the ingress node and use those ports to map it. So uh, there's not uh, directly um, uh, uh, with path ID, no. So if you have a path ID, it will you can manage it better, but it's not required. You can manage it better uh, from management plan, you can manage it better, but it's not essential. Okay, so then just to confirm, the MTNC ID space is independent from the number of UPFs you have then, right? Correct. That's correct. But there was in section, I, I forgot the section, there was a calculation John has done, uh, the typical scenario, how many are required and, you know, uh, how this is justified. There was a text uh, based on that and you can see that if it is, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer there. But that has, discussion has been done in one of the versions and we added specifically text for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, Hanu is next. Hanu, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Hanu, yes. Go ahead. Uh, just, uh, just checking this that uh, observation that in, in this work group, they are working on network slices and, and, and they have also the framework. This looks fitting into that, but I, I think it, Later on, when, when you develop further this, it, it would be good to have in, in line what, what the T's working group is doing. Otherwise, we are just adding more confusion here. Okay, so I can I can take this. Somebody commented on this and the working group also in the mailing list. So yes, so this work has been started maybe for almost one and a half year before T's working group is done, uh, started. I think T's working group, I'm following this closely, what T's working group is doing. Uh, both the framework document, the definition document, 
uh, they are not specifically targeting, of course, the 3GPP use case is there, but uh, uh, it's a more generic framework, IETF slice, what is IETF slice and what is uh, required. But um, we are uh, talking about two, uh, two, two points that's being addressed in this draft is a little bit orthogonal, but uh, uh, but only thing common is eventually once the ang models are defined there, uh, if uh, if a working group accepts this draft, we can uh, uh, extend that whatever the framework they come up with, we can extend uh, whatever the mapping scenarios we're creating here, we can add it there. We are not conflicting with what they are generically proposing. If you have any particular comment, if you think you are conflicting anything, you can, we, I, I'll definitely take your comment seriously and take up to it. Okay. But I uh, see. Well, we'll double check. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, I think uh, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for this. Uh, so Uma, did you uh, present this in uh, other working groups like Transport or other, any other uh, uh, groups? Uh, way back we presented. I'm not remembering. Uh, no, we only presented in DMM. We thought of presenting. Oh. No, I think uh, T's working group. Uh, John has presented, I believe. Oh no, no. Wait a minute. Yeah, John has presented in T's working group in a different format. Oh yeah, now I remember. So John has one contribution in last year. So he was presenting in T's, but rather than it's mostly 3GPP specific. Uh, so we he merged that portion that part of the draft into this draft. So yes, it's kind of kind of presented in taste by John. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think uh, yeah, where we'll get the work done probably that's you know a separate discussion. But in general, I just you know I think it's good to get some feedback from other groups as well, right? So I think so you are suggesting authors are suggesting we you know, issue an adoption call. Is that what the you know ask is? Or yes, what's, that's what's, that's what we're asking based on the effort that has been undergone and you know uh, the consensus we have on this okay. document so i think this is the start good starting point for further progressing the work i feel we feel okay so maybe let's uh, do a quick poll on like how many people have read the draft uh so to the song can you share a poll do you think please sure sure and stool Okay, John is saying he presented only in DMM. Okay. Okay. So eight people have read that. Nine. Okay. Nine has. Exactly. All right. About fifty people nine have read the draft. Right. Alright. Okay, so uh, we will discuss with uh, Eric and uh, the mailer with the uh, issue and adoption. Uh, you know. Okay, okay, thanks, Sri. Thank uh, thanks, Okay. Uh, the next. Uh, which one is it? So the so the next. So can we go to the SRV6, uh, Mia, can we do it? Hello. Yeah. Okay, and shall I? Yeah, if you can share that. Yeah, that's fine. Please go okay. ahead. Okay. So do you see my screen now? I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Hello. Do you no, see my screen? Uh, All right, let me let me try to show. During the preparation, I think we can have a uh, voice from yeah, Tochio san in the queue. Oh, we are. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, yeah, please go.
Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um. Okay. So who is present? Mia, I think. Mia, Mia, son, please. Ah uh, yes. So still, I cannot share my screen. Okay, let me see if I can do that. That's fine. That's fine. just one. Second. Not giving me to share. So, so can you try this? Okay. Yes. So I'm trying to show you, it says the request is not allowed by the user agent of the platform in the current context. What is the context? Okay, then I will, I will share. Okay, I'm right now. Can you try now? How about now? Do you see the screen? No, I don't see. No. The screen should be started. I think something is happening here, but it's not coming up. No, it says permission error. Hmm. So are you, we already permission. Hmm. Okay. I think it's going to be a, uh, the macro with this section. Ah. Perhaps. Oh, well, you need to do permission. Hmm. How would you can you try? Let me try. But nothing. Okay. Uh, I checked the privacy, but there's no. Okay, yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for taking time. Thank you very much. So um, thank you for your time. This draft discusses the architectural implication um, to supplement the SRB6 mobile user plain draft, uh, which is um, DMM working group document. Um, so agenda 
is uh, so we revisited the objective the, of the draft and then architectural discussion and then we are um, discussing about the exemplification uh, of network slicing edge computing and the url lc so next slide please so we have revisited <coughs> the objective of this draft and basically this document discusses a solution approach and its architectural benefits of common data playing across domains, uh, which includes UE, IP transport, data center applications, and across overlay and underlay. Um, so this approach may be, in a sense, contrary to proposals that the underlying transport can be anything. Um, but it is an approach to make the network as flat as possible and make making it more suitable for the distributed mobile deployment model. Next page, please. So the diagram shows a typical example of the mobile network. So GTP session uh, from UE to mobile anchor, uh, UPF in this diagram. And MPLS or segment routing is used in the transport network and VXRAN or GENEV or uh, whatever for segmentation in data center. And the VLAN ID is used as a correlating ID. And NAT firewall is used for, um, for the address conversion and um, perimeter security. Next slide, please. And this architecture had some limitations. So uh, this um, tunnel-based architecture is not optimized for edge or distributed computing. And the GTP session termination uh, could be a scaling bottleneck. And it's also not optimized for any to any communication and the security model is perimeter security. Um, next slide, please. For future distributed uh, mobile network, uh, where access is heterogeneous and data is um, spread ubiquitously uh, by multi-cloud or distributed edge cloud, um, the architecture need to change. Oops. We use this. Right. What happens? We don't see it. So take a moment. Okay. Yes. Sorry for the trouble. Thank you. This so is for the future distributed mobile network. Um, access should be more heterogeneous. Next, uh, next slide. Next slide, please. 
Yeah, this one. So axis should be heterogeneous and data should be spread ubiquitously by multi-cloud or distributed edge cloud. So we are uh, aiming more simple uh, flat architecture by commonalized data plane across domain and overlay and array. Next, next page, please. So as some example for applicability of 5G mobile network. Um, so the one is network slicing. So basically flat network can eliminate PEC hierarchy. So the current issue that is that a uh, certain extra ID like VLAN ID is needed for segregating traffic and mapping it, it onto a designated slice. And the PE and um, PEC connect connection is a single point of failure, so some form of P redundancy is required. Um, but um, if UPF or mobile anchor can um, belong to IP network, it can directly interact with network slices and or make applications, um, multi-access edge computing applications. Uh, by the way, it does not mean we must eliminate PEC hierarchy. Uh, we can still have uh, domain boundary or a PEC hierarchy uh, depending on the network design. But um, to flatten the network could have some um, advantages. Next page, please. And for edge computing, edge or distributed computing needs an um, application framework. And data plane need to be simple and um, should be easily implemented in compute stack um, so that application can interact with the um, data plane easily. Next page, please. And for your LLC, um, 3GPP TR23725, uh, section 6.4, addresses the issue on how to support redundant data transmission via single UPF and sing single um, LAN node. But, but overlay tunnel cannot ensure the disjoint path. Also, the replication and the margin point would be the single point of failure. In this context as well, um, SRV6 is simpler to support tight SLA and URL receive. Furthermore, um, SRV6 supports in-band telemetry or time, time stamping for latency monitoring and control. So uh, it could be a big advantage in terms of um, monitoring and controlling the latency. Next slide, please. Um, so this document discussed a solution approach with SRV6 and its architectural benefits of common data playing across domains and across, across overlay and array. And we believe that this um, approach makes the network as flat as possible and enable distributed mobile deployment, uh, which has advantage for major 5G requirements um, like network slicing, edge computing, and URL LLC. Um, um, so this proposes the data plane will be more simple and flat and we'd like to ask the DMM working group to adopt this document. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. So I think, uh, you know, you don't have enough time to, to have any questions on this one. But uh, we, uh, we can now open discussions on the mailing list and uh, then we'll open an option for you. Okay. Next question. Can you can find it? Okay. I 
it's here. Suddenly, I'm not sharing or suddenly, so I want to share it. Uh, I know a few folks are in the queue, but uh, in, we want to run the game. Presentation and uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time. Yoma, Carlos, maybe we have to do something. Yes, sorry about that. So, can I ask a quick question, uh, Sri, or no? I don't know. Uh, yeah, quick 20 seconds, please. Okay, so I think uh, the last slide shows about both uh, uh, overlay and underlay, right? So I think it's a good summary of uh, various service decks can be used. Uh, but uh, I, I think I didn't understand the relation between the overlay and underlay case, right? So overlay is the GTP. So is it, it referring to the uh, Sutaro's draft where overlay can be removed uh, with SRV6 or it's focusing on only on the underlay part? I think from the last slide, it shows that both are overlay and underlay. Oh, you, you're saying about Thank overlay, you. GDP overlay or regular? Uh, I, I just want to be clear on that one. Go ahead, yeah, network yeah. Uh, capability yes. could, uh, could be used for controlling the overlay as well. OK, so that is the uh, Satoru's uh, draft, right? I think that's working with yes. draft, where GTP can be replaced with SRV6. Yeah, can be. Okay, 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 thanks. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think uh, Hanu Carlos wants to follow up on the emails, please. Hmm? All right, next. Let me add something. Uh, mobile is a plane by SRV6 is kind of the alternative and not to be straight to the uh, GTP. It's um, one of the candidates to provide the choice for the operator to use whether the mobile is a plane, is GTP, or SRV6. Okay. Great, can you hear me? Can you hear me right? Yeah, I can. So I am I am the presenter queue just to be able to share my screen. Can you give me the access to share my screen? Because I'm next, right, on the agenda? Yeah, I don't know. Following that, let's come on. Shinsuke sounds and then we go to Carlos. Is it okay? Okay. I think you have a comment. So, so there is something. I don't know, Shinzuki, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, good. So I, I'm wondering if the, the statement of common data plane across domain and application interaction, uh, if the application interaction is the intention now that the uh, applications are part of the routing fabric so that, that the applications are also involved in distribution of segment identifiers. Um, fortunately, this could be um, uh, your voice a break up. Um, you have to catch. So, okay, I, 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 I tried to think of the question. How is up how are applications interacting with, with, uh, with this common data plane? Are they part of the routing or not? I understand the, the question. Um, the how the application can interact with the yes, common so. data plane. Yes. Um, Yes, so the well, application needs some um, fr framework or programming framework or programming platform, and such platform uh, need to um, support the data plane. And uh, um, if the data plane 
is supported by the compute stack, then it's, um, it becomes easier to, to be the uh, application platform. That's what I meant. Well, uh, I need to cut the line here. We, need to, we don't have enough time for this. So can you go to the next presentation? Hanu, we are request to be please do it on now. Maybe yes, please. Shinsuke san, I don't hear that name is not Carlos. Go next then. Yeah, if you can let me share my screen. I can see that. Can I can I share the screen myself? Or not? Yeah, thanks. Carlos, please. But can, can I share my screen? Uh Sandra is sharing. So Sandra is sharing. Okay. Okay, go. Cool. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'm Carlos Bernardos from UC3M and I'm going to present this draft for the first time in, in DMM. I try to be brief because my my goal is to basically present some, some ideas, general ideas, and to see whether there is interest in working in these kind of topics. So the main motivation for this is to work in control solutions for uh, mobility management in, in distributed uh, SFCs, well, in SFCs, in service function chains, where in SFC, you know that there is a working group in ATF working on, on different mechanisms for service function chaining and control mechanisms for, for SFC were not there in a scope in SFC. So they didn't define control mechanisms yet. But I believe that is an interesting topic and mechanisms that are required. And uh, in particular, there are some points regarding mobility of functions, migration of functions within an SFC that I believe could uh, leverage from, from using or reusing or extending mobility protocols as the ones defined and maintained in the MM. So in the picture, I have just one example of architecture. So even though I'm going to use uh, terminology about pseudo controllers and central controllers, this is just an example. So the idea is that we have an SFC, so a function, a service function chain. We have different nodes here, UEs and a G node B, and we may have an uh, infrastructure connected to the G node B in the network. And uh, we have functions running on UEs and G node Bs. For example, we have function one running at node A, function two running at node B, and function three running in the G node B in node D. Uh, with current architectures, we have a, a central controller slash orchestrator, call it whatever you want, that is basically managing, responsible of the control, the lifecycle management, and the control of the SFC. And the motivation for this work was uh, some solutions that we are exploring in which, in addition to this central controller, we may have what we call pseudo controllers, but basically is other entities that are capable of also controlling the, the SFC. And one of the things that these controllers may do is uh, detect the need of moving a function to another node. For example, in this scenario, if node A, B, and C are moving away from node D, function three that is used by this SFC may, may not be in, in reachable anymore and we need to migrate that function three to another node, for example, node C in the, in the UEC. So this is the motivation for having a mechanism that allows to move functions, migrate functions in SFC. And our approach or our proposal is to extend Moale pv 6 mechanisms with new uh, messages for this specific purpose that is moving a function which is something similar to moving a host, but not the same thing, because uh, uh, here we have that the node that is triggering the movement is not, may not be the, move, the node that is moving itself. And we don't have like central entities like a homogen or an LMA. So basically the scenario is different. 
I don't want to go into the details because again, my my idea for this presentation is to see whether you think that this may be of interest of uh, DMM. I I want to present this kind of work also in SSC, but SSC didn't meet for the last uh, couple of uh, ITF meetings. But the idea is that that we we extend uh, the mobile IPv6 to support this kind of uh, mechanisms. In the draft, we define different mobility headers. So one is service path update and the acknowledgement. So basically, this is like kind of a binding update thing for moving a function within SFC. Uh, we also need some mobility, new mobility options to identify the network service and to identify the, the functions that we are moving. So again, I will not go into the details. So my my request here is uh, basically to ask people for feedback on the mailing list and uh, regarding if you think that this problem is of interest and this is part of an overall solution because for doing this kind of uh, distributed sfc control we need other other things and there are a set of companion drafts that are listed there for for interested people to to check uh, that's it i i would like just to to call for feedback whenever you have time if you think that this is uh, maybe of interest for you guys thanks uh, thanks carlos so not be able to you know, uh, line up any questions, but one comment is typically LMA is with the power of fifteen and gets a such information log, service chain information. Do you need protocol extension for this? Yeah, because I mean. There is no control mechanism, no protocol for control defined in SFC yet. So my my proposal is that uh, if they go into this, if they go into ex standardizing uh, protocol extension for SFC control that is not specified by by SFC, okay. I believe that for mobility for for lifecycle management operation re related to mobility of functions, I think that we could reuse. Uh, mobile IP as a control protocol for that. That's the proposal. So they, they need to do this if they want to standardize this kind of SFC control that is, uh, they haven't done yet that. Sure. Uh, thanks. I think, uh, let, let's take the list. I think, uh, recently, you know, we are running one of my, you know, actually, we should have given the two-hour slot, but somehow we picked the one-hour slot this time. And that was not. And uh, almost presentation, we could not. It and also the chat discussion we cannot complete it. Sorry about that. All right, uh, that's the uh, certain so you want to say anything? Or Eric, last one, one, two. Nothing for me. Maybe I have uh, more quarantine meeting to do. Not here, Eric. Come a little close. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Nothing for me. Okay. Lots, more, lots more reading to do. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. This is the end of the working group. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for attending this meeting. I think we have uh, AIs and I will follow up. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody.